In this video, we are going to implement Lazy Generator with C++ coroutines. So what is the Lazy Generator? Well, it is a function which generates a sequence of numbers based on demand from a caller function. Consider the code segment I have written here. We have a function called getNumberSequence, which generates sequences of numbers. Now when we call this function from another function, or in this case, from the main function, all the sequence will be stored in the given vector. Then, we can perform operations on that generated sequence. But there are many cases where we need part of a sequence. For example, as shown here, in the main function in the first loop, we iterate until only 100 elements. Then, in the second loop, we iterate rest of the element. With the conventional generator, main function will only be able to execute first loop after all the sequence is generated. What if we have the ability where we can request the element of a sequence when it's needed? That's the exact purpose that we are going to create generators for. To build generators, we are going to use co-yield operator in coroutines. So let's first sketch our coroutine and then discuss the details. Let's name our coroutine as get next, and this will return a generator object. And it takes a start of the sequence and steps, which is the gap between elements in the sequence as arguments. Then, all we have to do is to iterate while calling co-yield in each iteration. This co-yield operator will set the value for promise and suspend the execution afterwards. Notice, we are returning generator type object here. In fact, we can generalize the implementation to generate different types of generators by adding the template class. In our case, let's have an integer type here. We have not defined the generator class yet. This class will be the wrapping class of our coroutine handle. Okay, as we saw in the previous video, we need two things to coroutine to work. We have to define promise type, and we need to define the coroutine handle. Let's begin with the promise type. So let me add the promise type declaration to our coroutine handle class first, which is the generator in this case. Now, promise type definition is pretty similar to our previous implementation. So let me copy that code here. And now, let me change this promise type accordingly since it is declared in the generator class. For co-yield operator to work, we need to have or we need to add a yield value function to the promise type declaration. This function takes value, which is going to be the argument or the expression for the co-yield operator, and we are going to keep the local variable called current value in the promise type and set that value using value passed to the yield value function. Argument to this function correspond to the expressions we provided for co-yield operator as I mentioned earlier. In our case, we have an integer value expression in our co-yield operator. So the argument to the yield value function in this case will be an integer value. Now, from the coroutine handle, we can retrieve this value via promise type object and return the value to the calling functions. Okay, now to generator class implementation. Let me define the coroutine handle type and then have an object from that type as usual. Then, we can initialize this handle with the value passed to the generator class constructor. This constructor will be called implicitly when coroutine object gets initialized. Now we can have the destructor for this generator class, which is going to destroy the coroutine handle. Now here, I'm going to have two functions, one called getValue, which is going to return the current value from the promise type, and the next function, which resume the coroutine and generate the next value. Remember, Coroutine handle is to use from caller side code, so these two function act as an interface for that purpose. Now in the getValue function, all we have to do is to return current value in the promise type object, 
and in the next function, we can call resume on coroutine to generate next element in the sequence and return whether the coroutine has any more suspension point or not by calling done function on the handle. So from the client side, we can call next function in condition check to generate next value in a sequence if there are more elements to generate. Let's see how to use this generator from client code now. So in the main function, I have called the getNext function and store the returning generator. Notice for this coroutine, we have provided default arguments start as 0 and step as 1 for coroutine as well. So we can call the coroutine without any argument in this way. Now, in a for loop, we can call the next function to generate next value in the sequence and call get value to retrieve the value from the coroutine in this way. Now if I duplicate this for loop again and print the value in another line and run this example, you can see that get value has returned a sequence of numbers from 0 to 21, and those values were generated based on demand from the caller. You can use above generate a class with promise type to generate many sequences of numbers.